uh, who was at one point in time the number one ranked star. Now, I think she's channeled that into an enthusiasm for sports where she speaks with a lot of passion and a lot of knowledge. Like, um, First of all, I was in the adult industry for three months, so you need to fact check before you ask me to call into your radio station. Goodbye. Well, we weren't supposed to mention that she was ever an adult film star. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Today I'm going to be talking about the rise and fall of Mia Khalifa, otherwise known as Big Titty Arab. She started out as an adult film star, but was also a YouTuber, Twitch streamer, and sports commentator. I'm sure all of you know who she is, and she's probably on half your guys' incognito tabs right now. Welcome to my Christian server. Mia Khalifa was born on February 10th, 1993 in Lebanon. However, when she was about 10 years old, she moved to the Washington DC area. Mia developed early, and by that I mean her mammary glands turn into gazankas by the time she was in the sixth grade. Interestingly, she was actually overweight growing up, but slimmed down in college. Oh, and she even went to military school. People online have speculated that her real name is Sarah Jo, but no one knows for certain. And when she turned 18, she got married to a man whose identity isn't public information as of today. Mia's career started when she was randomly walking around Miami when a guy approached her, told her she could be a model, and gave her his card. After looking into it, she realized that he worked for an adult film company. But since Mia had low self-esteem and wanted to get more male attention, she decided to get involved in the industry. She had also just gotten breast implants and her figure was as hot as ever. Mia also mentioned that her toxic husband was a factor in her decision who she would eventually divorce several years later. Initially, Mia had a lot of fun making videos. She said that everyone was tested frequently and that she felt like a star during shoots. People did her hair, did her makeup, and even did her. However, her entire life changed one faithful day, no pun intended, when she was asked to wear a hijab and perform a scene. She stated that after she told producers that they were going to get her killed that they just laughed. Islamic headscarf, often known as hijab, and of course then it developed into a sort of a sex scene. You must have known how provocative that was. I verbatim told them, you guys are going to get me killed. And they said? They just laughed. And feeling intimidated and pressured, she went along with it. I was scared. But I, I, I knew that if I said no, it would, it would, you know, they're not, you can, they, they're not going to force you to do it. That's, at that point, that's rape. No one's going to force mm. you to have sex. Um, but I was still scared. I mean, I, have you ever felt scared to, not scared, but nervous to speak up and say something at a restaurant when your food's not right and the waiter comes by and says, how is everything? I, I was intimidated, I was nervous. And well, the video exploded in a colossal big bang, no pun intended, that would even make Epstein turn in his grave. A lot of people called her scene an insult to Muslims everywhere and she received a massive amount of hate. It got so bad that ISIS sympathizers posted a video that featured Mia's head in the place of another person who got beheaded. They even hacked her Instagram. She also got freaked out when pictures of her apartment at the time appeared online. The response was also odd considering that Mia wasn't Muslim but rather Catholic. And well, all of the attention she received actually blew up her Instagram from a few hundred followers to about 2 million in a single week. She was even the number one star on a website that rhymes with Cornhub. I actually did some dedicated research because, you know, I'm a sort of scholar in this department and discovered that Mia actually did multiple videos wearing a hijab. Many in the Middle Eastern community were upset that Mia would do an adult film with a hijab on. There were actually at least two other full-length videos where Mia performed a sexual scene with a hijab on. Due to the intense backlash, Mia decided to leave the industry for good. She stated that she did 12 videos in 3 months for a company that rhymes with gang hoes and only made a measly $12,000. And I read you only made $12,000 from it? Before taxes. Before taxes? Yes. Yeah. Oh my gosh, she did what, like 12 videos? Yes. But Mia also mentioned that she made an additional $166,000 over 3 years from her work with them as a social media manager. So she said she actually made a total of $178,000. Mia also created a lot of buzz when she revealed that the industry websites kept promoting her videos over and over after she left and made massive amounts of money using her likeness. Money that she never received a single penny from. And while the low $12,000 figure that she claimed she earned from scenes was backed up by others in the industry who mentioned that $1,000 per video was average, this upset the general public who rushed to Mia's defense. 
To add insult to injury, an expert in the field, no not me, said that if she partnered with Cornhub then she could have made as much as $500,000. However, Mia's revelation upset gang hosts who refuted it with a tweet that stated she actually did 28 videos and not 12. It said, Retweet if you know how to count to 28. The tweet also included a link that contained every single one of the 28 videos that she did. Of the 28 videos, 18 were with them and 10 were with different production companies. It also included a 41 second video that straight up memed her claim. You were paid a grand total for all the 12 sex videos you made. You were paid a grand total of 12,000 US dollars. Oh my gosh, you did what, like 12 videos? Yes. 12 videos? Yes. 12 videos? Yes. There was seven videos where it was with men. She says that for, she made about a dozen videos within the span of a month or two. More than that, Playgirl. Mm -mm. Only, she only made a dozen. 12 videos? Yes. 12 sex videos you made. 12 videos? Yes. In response, Mia posted a tweet that said facts and honesty guys and linked an article about the time gang hoes made a video featuring a 15 year old beauty queen and a murderer. Interestingly, she didn't deny anything. The controversy created a buzz on Reddit with one thread in r slash out of the loop receiving 10,900 upvotes. You see, many Redditors were willing to do the arduous and painstaking research required to validate all of the claims. Some poor souls even had to triple and quadruple check to ensure all of the information was as accurate as possible. And well, if you want to look everything over for completeness sake, then you should pay attention to today's sponsor, Atlas VPN. Atlas VPN blocks those sketchy adult film ads and provides you with a titillating and pleasurable experience. Currently, Atlas VPN is the cheapest VPN service that is able to unlock worldwide libraries of services such as Netflix, Amazon Prime, Hulu, HBO Max, ESPN, Crunchyroll, Peacock TV, BBC iPlayer, and YouTube TV in 4K quality. For example, if you want to watch Rick and Morty on Netflix in the US, you can't. But if you use Atlas VPN on the UK server, you can stream the entire series because it allows you to unlock the geo restriction. And there's multiple other shows that you can unlock on Netflix such as Doctor Who, How I Met Your Mother, and Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Atlas VPN features also include P2P support for safe torrenting, SafeBrowse, a customer support team that is available 24-7, and unlimited devices that Atlas VPN can be concurrently used on iOS, Mac OS, Android, and Windows systems. Also, Atlas VPN is extremely secure and they don't log any user activity while connected to their servers. You can get Atlas VPN for as cheap as $139 per month, so sign up now using my link in the description so they know I sent you. Now back to the video. The conclusion was that Mia wasn't entirely accurate about all of the videos that she was in. However, all of the Twitter drama ended when she received a cease and desist letter. After moving on from the industry, Mia worked as a cam girl for about a year. Interestingly, she actually chose to keep her stage name as a way to make money from social media. Afterward, she got a job as a paralegal and then again at a construction company. Mia mentioned that everyone knew who she was and she had to leave due to harassment. To play devil's advocate though, many people pointed out that there was a bit of hypocrisy with Mia's decision to keep the name Mia Khalifa to benefit financially but still want to be distanced from her past as an adult film star. You can't have your dick and eat it too. Sorry, I mean cake. In 2016 and 2017, Mia started calling athletes out for sliding into her DMs. For example, on September 5th, 2017, she posted a thread of messages that Cubs player Wilson Contreras sent her on Instagram. She even tagged the Cubs. The tweet said, Cubbies, your mans is wandering around left field. Can you come get him at Cubs? And the screenshotted messages said, I'm sure you get this a lot, but I'm big fan of you. It will be great if you just say hi. Bye. LOL, good morning, good afternoon. Me friend, I hope you're doing good. She also exposed Ole Miss quarterback Chad Kelly. The DM said, add me on snap, see Kelly underscore 104. Better see you at the game too on the 5th. I'm only following you for Seminole Recon to find your weaknesses before the game. Also because last chance you. Oh yeah, haha, you're funny. What did you think of the show? Weakness one, can't resist urges to slide into DMs of girls out of his league. Hilariously, the vice president of a website that rhymes with Cornhub heard about the incident and wrote this letter offering an opportunity for an adult star to be his dating coach. It said, Dear Mr. Chad Kelly, I hope this letter finds you well. 
I wanted to reach out following the news that you have once again slid into Mia Khalifa's DMs on Twitter. I'm not sure if there is a correlation between your attempts at wooing Miss Khalifa and your play on the field, rough loss this week at Arkansas, but we wanted to intervene and offer our assistance before you strike out for a third consecutive time. I'd like to officially offer you an opportunity to go on a date with a star and learn how to best pick up women. Think of Cornhub as your dating coach. We can arrange a lovely dinner date with one of our beautiful stars and she can show you the ropes. You can try various pickup lines on her, see which ones work, which ones fall flat. She can offer guidance and break down the X's and O's of dating so you're best equipped for future situations. We know the NCAA can be a bit harsh on student athletes and might not permit this during the season, so rest assured the offer will remain beyond your graduation. Feel free to take us up on the offer and we can arrange everything accordingly. Limo service will be included, just FYI. Unfortunately though, since he was a college athlete, he couldn't accept, but luckily the offer extended beyond his graduation. However, everything backfired when NBA player Gilbert Arenas exposed her for sliding into his DMs. It was definitely a five head move. In a now deleted Instagram post, he screenshotted four messages that said, Hey, I'm back in LA. It was so nice meeting you last time I was here. Do you want to grab dinner or something? I don't know too many people out here, LOL. Wine glass emojis, question mark. Doing anything for the Caps game tonight? Damn, no love for the DC fam. He captioned the post, Mia Khalifa would slide in my DM for the D. The thirst is real since Backpage is gone. This bit has no room for negotiations with me. $150 or you better slide into Nelly DM for that raw D behind a Walmart. Ironically, in late 2017, the two were selected by Complex to run a daily sports show called Out of Bounds. I bet their first meetup was pretty awkward. But Mia loved being a sports commentator as she had an interest in sports her whole life and supported DC area teams as well as the Seminoles college football team. Mia then co-hosted another show called Sports Ball. In August 2017, Mia started streaming on Twitch and did cooking streams. She also appeared on Soda Pop and Stream. I'll move the cam up a little bit because they're only, oh, yes. yeah, there they're only yeah. seeing one part of you there. Jeez. <laughs> Goodness the gracious, part. guys. The most important yeah. part. Yeah. Exactly. I'm sure that's what they were all talking about in your heart. Yeah. yeah. She even talked to Ice Poseidon. My boy tried to hit on her, but was sadly turned down and insulted. That's what I'm saying. Like, your voice doesn't match your face or your tiny, frail, anemic body. Hey, yo, Mia, what the f you think this is? You think y'all roasting it over here? What the f is wrong with you, baby? You think, you think this is a fucking joke? I can see you. I can't take you seriously. Oh, no, nah, the screen's blacker than my skin, baby. What's up? You think this is a <laughs> joke over here? Wait, Thank where God, are motherfucking you ass. Are I'm you gonna come over from here and Florida? be like, Pee Wee Herman, what's up, baby? Trying to, no, what's up? I mean, I, I don't know. I, think I, dude, I mean, look at that. I mean, also, I would you be down to make a new one with me? I'm in a hard pass on that. Let's all please put an F in the chat for Ice. She also told Ice that she didn't take trolls seriously on her streams. How do I deal with what? Like the people talking. Oh no, just the people who used to, you know, who say like, oh, I know you from somewhere. Um, I think that everybody thinks they're original and hilarious, and I've seen so much of it that it doesn't even faze me anymore. Like, no one, you, like, it, first of all, you're not getting to me. Second of all, you're not funny. Like, you're not, you're not original. The, I've been, I've been out of, for like, a little over three years now. Um, it's just, it's old at this point. I, I don't really give a shit about it. On the video though, someone disagreed and commented, Mia actually gets butt hurt from trolls on her stream. She banned me for asking her, how does living with HIV affect your social life? Overall, she only did a few streams on Twitch. However, Mia Khalifa was much more active on her YouTube channel where she often posted vlogs. As of today, the channel has about 875,000 subscribers. Over time, people still continued to troll Mia. For example, someone made an online petition asking Trump to make her the next ambassador to Saudi Arabia. In 2018, she got into drama with musician Smoke Kajabi, who was one of the two members of the band I Love Friday. It all started when a fake tweet surfaced that was photoshopped to look like it came from Mia Khalifa's official account. The tweet showed a picture of Smoke Kajabi smoking and said, She's so disrespectful to all Muslim women and gives us a bad image, shaking my head. Again, anyone that really knew Mia was aware that she was actually Catholic. But Smoke Kajabi apparently didn't know that and thought the tweet was real. So she created a diss track called Mia Khalifa with her bandmate and it was released on YouTube on March 4th, 2018. Currently, the video has over 100 million views. And as if that wasn't crazy enough, the song also blew up on TikTok after the user Nyan Nyan Cosplay posted a video featuring it. Then the song spawned the most popular TikTok meme in the Western Hemisphere called Hit or Miss. It even spawned a challenge in which someone yelled the lyrics hit or miss in public and waited for another person to respond with the next verse, I guess they never miss, huh? In mid-2020, I Love Friday actually released an apology video stating that they shouldn't have made the diss track. 
Hey, we're, we're Isla Friday. Friday. So everyone knows the hit or miss song, also known as the Mia Khalifa diss track. We made that song two years ago. We were young and we were dumb. Looking back on it, that song is very disrespectful to Mia Khalifa and also any other people, male or female, that have worked in the adult film industry. And we did not know that that song was going to be as big as it is today. Which does not excuse our actions. But moving forward, we are not going to bully anybody. We apologize to Mia Khalifa. We're sorry. We're really, really sorry. And... I'm no so more diss songs. We're not making any more diss songs. However, they later took back their apology after hearing about Mia's public feud with gang hoes regarding her unfair payment. They then announced they were going to release a second diss track. But as of the making of this video, it hasn't been released yet. This is a public service announcement. Mia Khalifa, I did a whole entire apology video that I didn't have to do, only to find out that you lied about how much money you made, how long you did everything, whether you had creative control. You so we take back that apology. Exactly, and shout out to Bros. I know that they're a good company and they do good business, but anyways, we're gonna have a Mia Khalifa part two. That's what I wanted to tell you guys. Mia didn't publicly comment on the song or the drama until a 2020 interview with Anthony Padilla and mentioned that it hurt her and scared her away from TikTok. In a twist, she also revealed that I Love Friday actually fabricated the tweet as a social media stunt to get views. How do you feel about the diss track named after you, literally called Mia Khalifa, that has gone so insanely viral thanks to the TikTok, which is purportedly the most viral TikTok in the entire Western world? I'm gonna be honest with you, because I'm a gangster and I don't really say this too often, but it kind of hurt me a little bit. Yeah. It just your name is attached to something so incredibly popular that is specifically made and fabricated to take you down or at least create some kind of smear campaign against you. It was the reason I was so adamant about never, ever, ever going on TikTok. Mm. I was terrified of it. I thought that everyone who ever used that song hated me and thought I was a slut and I would just be completely shunned away from there if I ever like stepped foot onto that platform. I counted, the song literally says your name 38 times in it. Yeah, well, anytime someone puts my name in something, it's gonna get clicks. So yeah, congrats yeah. to them for figuring out how to clickbait. <laughs> and that was specifically in response to? A fake tweet that they created. They created the fake tweet? Yes, there was, the a whole, there was a whole video of them coming out and saying it was a fake tweet. Oh, they admitted it. Yeah, okay. but recently okay. they posted an apology video about the about creating the whole song and about the slut shaming and then two days later after the smear campaign came out they posted another video saying we take back our previous apology and we will be coming out with a Mia Khalifa diss track part two stay tuned click subscribe to be the first one to hear hate or miss part two so they apologize for making up something about you yeah. and starting a smear campaign against you kind of and then they rescinded it because there was another smear campaign about you and they decided that they actually are okay with the things they made up about you in the yeah. past? Yeah. We'll see, they're very young, so their front brain hasn't fully formed yet. <laughs> Sadly, I couldn't find a video or any articles where I Love Friday admitted they faked the tweet. So I can't verify Mia's claims, but it doesn't sound like she is lying. In July 2018, Mia Khalifa's left breast implant ruptured after being hit by a hockey puck during a Washington Capitals playoff game. And in 2019, she vlogged her experience getting it repaired. In March 2019, Mia Khalifa announced that she married Swedish chef Robert Sandberg. Interestingly, they met when he slid into her DMs. But she was already following him because she liked cooking. And surprisingly, he knew nothing about her past at the time. They also created a combined YouTube channel called Robert and Mia, which has 218,000 subscribers as of today. But the channel hasn't been active in two years and only has six videos on it. Unfortunately though, during an interview with Philip DeFranco in August 2020, she revealed her husband was starting to struggle with her past. But Mia mentioned they were working on their marriage together and were in therapy. Um, we have actually been having trouble finding that balance because uh, recently, it's been a little hard for him to reconcile my past, and that has caused some issues in the relationship. And we're working through it and trying to communicate and trying to um, just ease any discomfort or, you know, any... It's really, it's really hard. He, he has never been used to this many eyes and this many voices, and it it got to him a little bit and it's been really hard for us to get through, but we're working on it. So the whole, 
propping up and bringing back down to earth. There's a little bit too much bring, bringing down to earth right now and not enough propping up and we're just trying to find that balance. Despite hitting a setback though, Mia says they are still happy and very much in love. Overall, Mia Khalifa had an extremely interesting career. Although it didn't go the way she wanted it to initially, it still worked out for her in the end. I mean, she has 22 million Instagram followers, has a loving husband, and is doing fine financially. Mia is also active on a website that rhymes with lonely hands and even appeared on the Hulu show Rami. Mia also made her own app called UREF to rate referees in sports events. However, Mia definitely persevered through a lot to get to where she is now. Mia endured threats from ISIS sympathizers, had a toxic ex-husband who she claims groomed her, was manipulated by gang host producers and executives, and experienced massive shame because her body was all over the internet. On July 24, 2020, she even posted a TikTok calling out a gang host producer, a gang host executive, and her ex-husband for mistreating her. She also pinned it to her Twitter account and it currently has 5.8 million views. Regardless though, I'm happy that Mia's doing well and wish her the best. Now, if you'll please excuse me, I have to go use Atlas VPN and verify the research in this video in 19 time. Thanks for watching, please drop me a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Peace.